Welcome to the Level Up Leader Podcast. I'm your host, Michael King. I'm an executive coach and founder of Teams.Coach. I work with C-level leaders to clarify and expand their vision, elevate performance, and level up their leadership. Now, on today's podcast, I am joined by none other than the one and only Jesse Moore. Jesse is on the member services team for the Omaha Chamber of Commerce. I've known Jesse for a few years now, so when he told me that he would be sharing about never giving up, I was immediately in. Jesse is one of the most positive and proactive people that I've ever met, so please welcome Jesse Moore to the podcast. Jesse Moore, welcome to the Level Up Leader Podcast. Um, Thank you. Awesome, man. I'm 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 really excited to be able to have you um, on the podcast. I've been reaching out and really wanted to be able to highlight some people that I feel like are making a pretty big difference, specifically right here in the Omaha area, um, and featuring leaders and and entrepreneurs, business uh, business advocates here locally as well. But um, tell us a little about uh, your story. You know, what makes you tick? What do you do? Um, what are you most passionate about? So I'm Jesse Moore. Uh, born and raised Omaha, Nebraska. Um, I mean, when I say born and raised, I mean, Central High School, UNO, and then, you know, wasn't until I was probably 25 that I even got past 90th. And so now I'm a little bit farther west, but really passionate about Omaha. What I do is I work with the Greater Omaha Chamber of Commerce. And so anything business related uh, from small business medium business, big business, nonprofits. Um, my goal is to, you know, kind of share what the chamber has as far as resources and then be inclusive. That way everybody can have a piece of that pie when it comes to business. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. How did you, how did you get into your, your engagement with the Omaha Chamber of Commerce? So my original background is in marketing and psychology. And so when I was a marketing director, I was a volunteer with the chamber. Uh, we were members, of course, as a business. And then they had multiple different volunteer opportunities, councils, committees, and clubs. And I just started volunteering and really, you know, utilizing my membership as a member, but then also helping other members get involved as well. And it was just engagement that kept growing and growing and growing. I love that. What has been the most rewarding thing for you uh, in, the, in the position and even opportunities that you have? I love hearing stories like business stories, especially from small businesses who, you know, they don't necessarily see that as their marketing content because that's their day to day grind, you know, just getting over whether it be hiring or products or something like that. But those are the inspirational triumphs that other entrepreneurs and other small businesses need to help motivate them through, you know, whatever they're working on. So yeah, every day is like Discovery Channel. I get a chance to go to a business, hear their stories, learn about their family, learn about the history. And that is a reward in all of itself. Man, I love that. I love that. So you you have a you have a little bit of history to where you haven't just always been working just in Omaha Chamber, but you have a you have a pretty extensive history working even even in like uh like through uh, another local business that's not around anymore, but through Crane Coffee and and yep. whatnot. Tell us a little bit how you got where you got. So Crane Coffee, I started at Crane uh, basically right out of high school, just as a local barista. Um, and then, of course, you know, as time went on, worked my way up to management, left. And, you know, I wanted a big kid job, quote unquote. And so left and did some things with some other businesses and other companies, both small and large, and got the opportunity to come back to Crane probably about 10 years later, I had always wanted a corporate position, you know, not in the shop or the drive through window, but, you know, working for the, the big picture. And um, they finally had a budget for marketing. And so I wanted to, you know, help out with the marketing team. And where I fell in love with it is when I came back to that shop that I once managed 10 years ago, the people welcomed me as if I had taken, you know, a seasonal college break or something. And to me, that kind of blew my mind because, I was like, I didn't just leave for three months and come back. I left for 10 years and came back. 
but the customers in the community welcomed me back as if I was a returning family member. And that's when I really was like, Omaha is super special. I want to help highlight those people, everyday people and their stories. Man, I love it. Um, now you've, you've obviously have, you know, changing different careers and even just even throughout time, we all grow into being better leaders and learning how to have a bigger impact and influence in the spaces that we occupy. Is there a specific time when you realized that you had, you had to level up your leadership? Like what was that moment like for you? Yes. So leadership, I mean, fresh out of the gate, when you hear leadership, you think of the boss or the person in charge, uh, the leader, if you will. And of course, you know, everybody who's young, and you know, passionate wants to just run into it and be like, come on, team, let's do it. Um, but where I really changed as far as my leadership goes was realizing that, you know, you have two ears and one mouth for a reason. <laughs> and so the more you listen and the more you collaborate with others, then you can become an effective leader that way by actively listening and growing the group rather than just one person in charge, you kind of empower everyone to make a difference. Yeah, I love that. You know, there's, you you mentioned just working with um, different organizations and different small businesses and entrepreneurs throughout the area. And, um, and I kind of operate in the same way as to where it's like, we, we coach, you know, C-level leaders from fortune 500 all the way down to the most eclectic and energetic visionaries um, at the entrepreneur and solopreneur level as well. Um, but one of the things that I always end up coming back to is this idea that um, I can tell the difference in an organization that has top line revenue as their key indicator that they're winning versus the organization that understands that it's the experiences that you make that are the end goal um, because those organizations, they actually have proof of life that top revenue typically follows the experiences that you create. Would you agree with me on that? 100%. Culture is so important because if you love what you're doing, you're going to win. You're going to win. <laughs> and so the more you love it, the more money you'll make from it. And yeah, so trying to lead with numbers, that's a harder game <laughs> versus you know leading with people and then those numbers follow. Well, and that this is what I've seen you do well, and that's why I wanted to to get your voice on this um, this program for a few minutes. Was just because you know I see from your networking events, and you're so consistent with your messaging uh, of positivity, and even just the vision statement of, of of the chamber. But you represent well. You're all about relationships and making sure that people win. That in itself, in itself, you're creating this experience of you know association, accessibility. Um, and helping leaders transform through them being comfortable with the skill sets that they have so they can actually take everything to the next level. Um, business is hard because you can easily get caught in this comparison game. What I love about Omaha is it doesn't feel like that all the time. It feels like we're kind of all in this together and, um, and relationships are really important here. 100%. Relationships, they matter. And you can have two businesses the exact same business, and you do things differently. And so when you collaborate together, you're able to find out, okay, so I use, you know, cards one through nine, and they use cards, you know, nine through jack or something like that. And so you're able to really like shuffle the deck and kind of trade out your trading cards, if you will, and collaborate, grow, and then both businesses win. Or you contract them out and say, hey, you know what, you are better at X, Y, and Z and I'm better at ABC. And so we trade and become kind of friends. Yeah. What do you feel like are some of the biggest hurdles that, that businesses and leaders are having right now in, in 2022, 2023? Well, marketing always gets the last arm of the budget. <laughs> um, and so that I say, you know, share your voice, share your stories and do it in ways that you never would expect. I mean, we always carry a cell phone in our pocket. So take a picture of something, share that love, that design that, you know, we're always cleaning up after ourselves. As soon as you get done cleaning something, take a picture of it, share that story. Um, and then also always be communicating, whether that's, you know, picking up the phone and dialing. I know that 
cold calling and those types of things are kind of weird. But if you start the conversation genuinely with, hey, I'm just calling to ask a couple questions, do you have the time? I don't mean to interrupt. Little things like that go a long way. Be authentic in your communication. I love that. So we have internal communication and external communication, um, which would be considered kind of like that marketing and that sales arm of, of what you do. I see this a lot too. Um, we, we threw out a statistic uh, last year. We did some research on this because we found that in the United States in the year 2020, there was $281 billion spent on external marketing strategies. Um, that's a lot of money, <laughs> like, <Yeah>. right? <laughs> But there, in, but in like, there was only one percent that was actually spent on internal communication strategies. So, um, so what you just said, like you brought down, you brought a very very specific blueprint to this. Is like, hey, share your stories, get online, make phone calls, um, all those things. When you when you're able to take the thing, things that are closest to the heart of the organization, and you're able to communicate to the people that are closest to you already, and create internal fans. There's something that it does maximize your resources for external marketing when the people that are a part of the organization love it in the first place. Oh, the people in the organization, those are your first line of defense for brand ambassadors. I mean, they're wearing that logo on their chest every day when they come to work. And so, yeah, if they love their job. They're going to share how much they love their product or their service. And, and whether it be friends and family, word of mouth travels. Oh, 100%. 100%. And I think I think in the age of, uh, well, just to even just back up, I love what you're talking about when you're talking about sincerity and authenticity and just being genuine in these, in your, your outreach methodology, because in this world, something shifted. And I don't know if you felt it or not, but all of a sudden on this side of, tw- in, you know, 2022, early on, all of a sudden, I can't actually log into my LinkedIn or my my Facebook feeds without it consistently feeling like somebody's trying to sell me something all the time. Yes. And even for what we do here, we offer things from time to time to bring clarity to the products and services that we provide as, exec- as, as me as an executive coach. But it has always been more like, how can we serve the community in making sure that I'm helping everybody win in simple ways on a day-to-day basis? And so I really start with that um, because I don't want to be a part of that noise, but I want to I be approachable when people need it. Exactly. And you hit the nail on the head on that one. With the internet growing and now SEO being paid for and all this other, I mean, yeah, there's always something online. But they're never going to be able to replace real people, real interactions, real like conversations. And that's why I love organizations like any chamber of commerce, because that network to network, you know, B2B interactions, that's reality. It really is. And we we started developing an external sales team. Uh, earlier in 2022, which we never really did that before, before, because we were speaking at conferences, being on stages and um, our inbound has always been healthy, but in order for us to scale, we realized, you know, we really kind of need to figure out what type of outbound sales strategy works for us. And it's all about relationships. And, and, and that's really for us. I mean, so even on the, we found that, um, in 2022, it was interesting because, you know, you can kind of bring anybody on to your team and they can spam people all day long on social. And they can, you know, and that's some, that's, to be honest with you, that's some company's definition of their outbound sales departments. But what we found was that there's so few people that are actually picking up a phone and going, Hey man, I'd love to hear your story. Yep. Let's go grab coffee because I'm absolutely hundred percent intrigued by what you do. Um, that just means a lot to people. It's genuine and it's real. And that's the thing. If you can start the conversation, learn, and then pitch, you're going to have a better close rate. I mean, if you start with the pitch, you're all the other noise. Well, and what we talked about, so that that is the difference between organizations that lean with top line revenue and initiatives versus experience initiatives. I can always tell when somebody is engaging with me on whether they're feeling the heat on financial objectives. Man, they get to the, they get to the pitch so fast, and uh, I want I want a best friend, man. It's just like like me and you. 
we've we've engaged uh, through. Well, I first I asked you out to grab coffee, and you immediately said, "Only if it's local." I'm not going to a chain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love that. Yeah. <laughs> then it's like, then it's like, okay, our our back and forth regarding you know Marvel and DC superhero mm-hmm. world, which I have my my honorary member of my executive team right here. So uh, <laughs> nice. He just sits there right there, but um, but yeah, but I think that again, creating that authentic experience. It's um, it will be the deal breaker between who's winning and losing moving forward. No, definitely. And those details matter. Like, yeah, maybe 20 years ago, it was straight to the punch. But it's, you know, let's get to know each other. Let's talk about dogs. Let's talk about, I mean, little things like that. You see it online all the time anyway. So why not bring it in business and, you know, have that real life experience? Yeah. That's so good. So, um, all right, kind of coming into yes. into landing the plane here a little bit. You've got great experience. You have some really good relationships here within the Omaha community. Um, what would you say is like your number one leadership level up leader tip? And what's a story that you have that can that can support it? So my number one tip is going to be never give up. Um, where there's a will, there's a way. Our mind is so powerful, and what we can do, we can either talk ourselves out of it, or we can you know talk ourselves into it. And my personal experience at Crane Coffee, uh, we did have an accident where a car drove through one of the coffee shops and I happened to be there that morning. And it was just, it was, I mean, the moment, it just happens. And so it was like, well, what do we do? And as the natural born leader in me, it was like, okay, well, we got to make sure everybody's okay. Things are safe. You know, of course there's, you know, PR and all that fun stuff. But it's like, no, we got to take care of the team. We got to make sure people are doing well. And at that moment, it was, okay, I still have to stay positive. Yes, I had some injuries and I just kind of ignored them. And I was dripping and (laughs) Bear Max were like, oh, you got to take care of yourself. But it was like, no, 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 no. I have to make sure that people are okay and that, you know, whatever needs to be done for us to heal is the focus on being healed. Like, well, we'll, you know, we can always tape stuff down and do inventory counts and all that, you know, logistic stuff, but it's really the power of the people. And with that, you just can't, you can't look at it from the rainy day. You got to look at it. Where's my umbrella? Where is the, you know, newspaper I can throw over my head? Where is that pivot? Even if it's small, but never give up. Always make sure that you're on top of it and aware of it. And if you need help, ask for help. I mean, too many people get suckered into pride and all that other stuff. We're here for each other. I mean, it's a natural, like, want to help each other. And we, if we continue to work together, there's no, there's nothing we couldn't accomplish. From the Egyptian pyramids all the way out to now, you know, rocket ships and everything. I mean, yeah, we're, we, we do it together. That's so good. That's so good. And I, I couldn't have said that any better too. There's something so powerful about unity, about staying positive and just that relentless spirit of never giving up. Um, and it's easy right now for you, for people to be able to throw in the towel on some things. And one of the things I consistently remind my leaders of is that you're going to fail 36 out of 37 times. Yeah. Something is going to happen that's not going to be in line with your grand master plan that your brain has put together to say, okay, all these things are going to line up. But there are there are golden failures. And for you to be able just to keep on moving forward and not giving up is so key. You can't let the failure take you and then you fail. You have to learn from the failure. And then next time you'll knock it out of the park and it'll feel that much better. Hundred percent. I love yeah. working with leaders that, as long as they're not stupid, as, as long as they're not, <laughs> as long as, and I'm, I'm saying stupid in the, in the, in, uh, in the way of, of if they're not just, re, you know, habitually making horrible decisions and not learning from the failures that they've made. Yeah. But I get excited when a leader said, you know what? Here's what we've tried. Here's what we've tried. Here's what we've tried. Here's what we've learned. And so this next time, I'm swinging even harder. That that excites me because I know that we can turn that into something. Active listening is not only verbal. <laughs> I mean, there is a lot of things That's that you can so learn just by watching. Yep. <laughs> Man. All right. So um, 
you got a couple things. So you, yes, sir. So just to kind of promote with the the uh, Chamber of Commerce, go so go ahead and share a little bit about that. So yeah, the chamber is for everyone. I mean, yes, many years ago it was only executives, and if you know your company joined, the owner was active in it. But we've opened it up, the Omaha Chamber, to you know marketing, HR, sales. People want to get engaged in the community, whether that be you know volunteering in young professionals or diversity and inclusion, transportation. And so it's little things like that that my generation now with the the chamber, we're looking to get involved. We're looking to get more and more people involved. And so the membership is a lot like a gym membership or business. The more you put into it, the more you gain out of it. But yeah, put your best cheerleader in there. Put your best advocates in there. Let them, you know, really help the city grow. And so that's probably the biggest thing that I want to share is that, yeah, let me know if you have questions, comments, myths. We're here to help. We're here to help them all. That's amazing. Uh, and Jesse, so again, so everybody who's listening, if you're if you're in the if you're in the Omaha metro area, if you haven't connected with Jesse, just get to know him. There's plenty plenty of opportunities and networking and leadership opportunities to grow here. Um, my commitment with this as well. So if you're listening to this podcast and um, and you are a part of the Chamber um, of Commerce, you get reach out to me as well because we'll give you a 15% discount on everything that we currently do if you're affiliated with the Chamber uh, as well. So um, how can people reach you if they want to get a hold of you? So you can email me at jmore at omahachamber.org. Um, I kind of live in Outlook Monday through Friday, uh, but then I'm also on all the social media platforms. I love LinkedIn, like we were talking, Facebook, Instagram. Um, you can call me at my office. Um, but I usually, depending on where I'm at in the town, you know, I'll email you back or I'll get in contact with you that way. But yeah, just Google Jesse Moore or omahachamber.org. And then my picture's on the team site as well. And all of our team members are listed there as well. So if there's a, a different subject, let's say, you know, transportation or diversity and inclusion, I can connect you with one of those team members as well. I love it, man. You did, you did really great on this interview. So thank you for being a guest. Um, Thanks for having me, man. So good. So good. Um, So we'll be, we'll be in touch and uh, man, thank you again for popping on the level up leader podcast. Well, thank you again. And thank you for helping leaders. It's a privilege, man. We, we love love what we get to do. So uh, man, thanks again. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today on the Level Up Leader podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, consider leaving a review on Apple, Spotify, YouTube, or wherever you get your podcasts. It really helps to get the word out. And make sure to like, subscribe, and follow so you get all of the episodes. Also, a special thank you to our featured artist, Names Without Numbers, for allowing us to use their music. We decided we only wanted to feature music that I've produced in the studio, so we think that's pretty cool. To find out more about everything that we're up to, please check us out at teams.coach. And don't forget to join our Facebook group at teams.coach slash leveluploaders.